Hello, my name is Guy Pickerel. I'm here with Rider Magazine. We're in New Mexico for the launch of the new 2022 KLR 650. The KLR has been around since 1984, initially as a 600, and then re-released in 1987 as a 650. Not a lot has changed in the 20 years since then. The KLR has built a enviable reputation for being a simple, reliable, go-anywhere bike. So let's start at the front. The screen is new, slightly bigger, and has two positions. You can adjust it higher for touring, lower for off-road. There's a nifty bar on the top here for mounting accessories. Um, a lot of new riders are going to like that. Get your phone on there, um, your GoPro, whatever it may be. The tank is 6.1 litres now and, and will provide obviously more mileage, more distance. It's slightly wider than the last one, but sitting on it and riding with it, you know, it works well and the ergonomics are nice. You, you've got your knees into the uh, groove there still. The seat has gotten bigger, uh, a bit more cushion. It's upgraded from the last one. Designed really for, for those miles that you're going to put in. Um, the subframe is now part of the main frame, so it's all one piece. This extra strength is going to allow, has allowed Kawasaki to add uh, a bigger rack on the back. It's also going to give the bike more stability. The swing arm is slightly longer and has been improved. That's also going to add stability to the KLR. The main low bearing points have been strengthened. That includes the swing arm point and the two uh, wheel axles. Also, the front brake is slightly larger. And anyone who remembers the old KLR is definitely going to be happy about the improved front braking. But the rear brake is also thicker and, and you know, less likely to fade when you've got those steep descents, especially those off-road descents where you're relying more on the rear brake. Generally speaking, the, the, you know, the good thing, I think, for KLR fans that are you know, the world over, they're going to be really happy that not a lot has changed. It's still the KLR they know and love. It's slightly enhanced. Yes, it's EFI, but EFI has been around for 40 years. It's about time. Um, but for the, I think, riders coming into adventure riding, this is a great opportunity at a great price. I think if there's three things you can say about the KLR, it's, it's a reliable, durable, cost-effective adventure bike. Um, and relative to many of its competitors, it does make a lot of financial sense and, and certainly is going to take you the same places. Um, we've enjoyed being here in New Mexico with Kawasaki. I'm going to be riding this home back to LA through Arizona and um, California and I'll report from the road on what, what, how we get on. We'll stack this thing up like I think many KLR owners are going to do. Tent, stove, you name it, and we'll take it out there and see how it works loaded up. So we spent the day in New Mexico today, um, starting just south of Albuquerque, working our way up through the mountains. Taos, the, the beautiful thing about New Mexico is it has such a varied terrain, a perfect place to test this road, off-road machine. It's still a tall, dual sport bike, and you know, designed to get you places no matter how the road conditions are. Um, so we tested out today, starting on the road. We got onto some dirt tracks, some very high elevation, I have to say. Um, and it, it's worked uh, extremely well. I think those that have, have spent a lot of time on the KLR before are going to feel, it's not going to feel a whole lot different. I think that the key things they're going to like are the, the improved braking. Certainly, I think it feels more sturdy. But for new riders, I think they'll enjoy the fact that, that this bike will chug through almost anything. I mean, one of the things today, for example, we were on a very rocky, loose track. The kind of place where I think on some bikes I might find myself switching constantly between second, third, maybe even fourth. One of the things I love about the KLR really is that that single cylinder just keeps thumping away no matter what. So we'll, we'll, you know, we'll slip the clutch a bit maybe, but there's no need to drop down, there's no need to go up. You can slip yourself through that, let the bike chug itself through the stuff like a tractor, do the loose stuff anyway. Um, 
And to me, that's that's where this this bike brings its comes into its own, really. I guess where you you realise that you know having less weight and having you know perhaps less power maybe, but makes more sense sometimes. And whilst the power on this certainly is less than many other big adventure bikes that will cost twice as much money, I think uh, sometimes when you're going to really take it somewhere perhaps not you know, fairly technical or, or find yourself perhaps alone where you, you're touring on your own and you want a bike that you can pick up or you can fix easily, that you don't have to concern yourself that if you drop it or, or break something, you're going to be stuck. It's still a very simple bike. It has EFI, sure, but you know, there's no fly-by-wire shenanigans going on here. Uh, you know, this is a bike you can fix in the field you can drop multiple times, pick it up, and keep riding. And to me, that's one of the things I love about the bike. I think um, tomorrow we're going to get into more technical stuff, and I'll report on how that goes. Um, but, at, uh, but today, we, we got in some fire roads. We even did a river crossing, and the bike has stood up well. It's been, it's been a great ride. I look forward to checking out for the next three days, or four days, in fact. We've got another day in New Mexico tomorrow and then three days touring with all the gear. We'll see how she does.